Hello guys, welcome to episode 11 of our access control explanatory series. In this episode, we are going to go over the AC11, that is device lock. But as always, a free way to support the channel is by hitting the subscribe button to help grow the channel if you haven't done that already. And also, do smash the like button and the notification bell to get notified whenever I upload new videos. Thank you and let's get started. Device lock is the temporary action taken when users stop work and move away from the immediate vicinity of information system or their computers. Device lock can be initiated by the user or more fundamentally enabled automatically when the system has been idle for a period of time, for example, after 15 minutes of inactivity on the system. Device locking means your applications and work interfaces are still on and running unless the application session terminate in the background. Now let's read the control requirement for AC11 in NIST 853 revision 5. AC11 device lock. The control A. Prevent further access to the system by selection one or more initiating a device lock after assignment organization defined time period of inactivity requiring the user to initiate a device lock before leaving the system unattended and b retain the device lock until the user re-establishes access using established identification and authentication procedure now let's look at the discussion device locks are temporary action taken to prevent logical access to organizational system when users stop work and move away from the immediate vicinity of those systems but do not want to log out because of the temporary nature of their absence. Device log can be implemented at the operating system level or at the application level. A proximity lock may be used to initiate the device lock. Example, via Bluetooth enabled device or dongle. User initiated device locking its behavior or policy base and as such requires users to take physical action to initiate the device lock. Device lock are not an acceptable substitute for logging out of systems such as when organizations require users to log out at the end of work days. AC11, that is the device lock, has only one control enhancement, which is pattern hiding display. So now let's look at the control requirement simplifications. So this control is to ensure that computer log on session is logged automatically after the organization time frame of inactivity. That is preventing any further action through the established session until re-authentication occurs. Some of the benefit of uh, device log control is device logs are a quick way to prevent unauthorized use of the systems when the authenticated users are away from their system. All right, so now let's look at the control assessment approach. As usual, to ensure this control is in place and functioning as intended, that is the design and functional or operational effectiveness, we do the following. You obtain and examine the access control policy and procedure, that is the dash one control. You obtain and examine system security plan, the SSP, to read the device log control implementation statement to determine the time frame allowed for a user to be inactive before a device is locked. That is, these two documentation will be the key for you to understand what the organization's policy in regards to device locks are. If it is 15 minutes, 20 minutes, 20, uh, 30 minutes, whatever minutes they allow by the organization of inactivity, of a user inactivity before the device lock, you have to understand that once you have that understanding in place, then you can actually start requesting for what the configuration. So you're going to obtain the screenshot of the configuration settings or have a user log on and leave the computer undisturbed for the allowed number of minutes that is stated in the dash one, that is the uh, access control policy and procedure or the SSP, whatever minutes they identify in their SSP and the procedure. You're going to leave that computer undisturbed for that amount of minutes plus one minute and see if the device will lock itself up, right? So you're going to get the configuration settings. In the settings, you're going to see exactly how that is configured on the system. You're going to see the number of minutes of inactivity in the screenshot that is going to be submitted to you. But as an add-on, you can ask 
one person or a user to log on using their credentials, leave the computer undisturbed and plus one minute and see if the device will lock. You also verify, you also have to verify that your user re-authenticate before they can use the device again. Sometimes the screen will go blank, but when you touch the keyboard, you notice that, you know, you'll be exposed to the screen that was previously displayed without any need for re-authentication. So it is, a, it is very important that you have a user re-authenticate, you know, themselves before they can have access to the active section that was there before the screen lock. All right. All right. So a key note here is that a lot of questions that I've been getting is, so do you have to do this if you have like 500 users or thousand users? No, this is a technical control. And what that means is that if you verify one, it suffice, right? So verifying one suffice, you do not need to do a lot of sample because it is a technical control. The way it's configured, you know, on the, um, you know, Active Directory or Domain Controller, like the LDAP and so on, is the same. So no matter what is the same configuration across the board for all users. So if you have one user, you know, verifying or testing this, that will suffice because there is no point having 220 people doing the same thing to verify. As long as that it is a, a configuration settings that is being pushed by the Domain Controller, and is or uh, the Active Directory or the LDAP kind of settings, one sample is enough. For technical control, one sample of this kind of thing is, is enough because it is established by the domain controller. All right, folks, that's it for this episode. Our next episode will be on AC12 session termination. If you like this control series, you can support me to create more of these videos by subscribing to the channel and hitting the like button for the YouTube algorithm to expose these videos to more people who might benefit from these videos as well. And always remember, until you spread your wings, you will never know how high you can fly. Thank you, and I'll see you in the next one.